Hello there, I'm Kevin McGahern, comedian, actor, and now artist. Join me as I interview some well-known celebrities while painting their portrait. And that's it. That's, uh, that's the show. Today we're talking to Derry Girl star Saoirse Monica Jackson, who's currently in lockdown in London. Hi Saoirse. Hello. Sorry, it was on silent. You're grand. How are you getting on, Saoirse? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Pleasure to meet you in this very strange way. Uh, <laughs> come here, have you ever had your portrait painted before? I think I've had it done once on a port in Spain when I was about eight, when they give you a really big, well, they always go in on my nose. Those ports, those people that do like the cartoon portraits of you, they always really go in on the nose. I need to hold a standstill pose for you the whole way through this, maybe like something dead and natural like this. <laughs> That's very <laughs> natural. That looks like you just broke your arm in a game of handball or something. Um, come here. So what is your sort of daily, what's your daily schedule sort of during this whole lockdown? We've got swing ball noise. Um, one of my house nights has got a sander. So he's sanding literally everything in the house that there is to sand. I'm scared he's going to start sanding me at some point. <laughs> Constant drilling sound all the time. So right before the lockdown, um, you won the Royal TV Society Award for Best Female Comedy Performance. And then and then before that, you won the Great British Bake Off. Like, which one do you value more? <laughs> I value the RTS a lot more, but my mum definitely values um, won a Bake Off so much more. When I won Bake Off, she rang me, because obviously it was pre-recorded, and she rang me afterwards and she said, I've never been as proud of you in my whole life. And I was like, seriously, mum? She said, because I always just thought, you know, you were useless, completely useless. And it goes, you know, well, I know the rest of the girls were just more useless than you. Uh, thanks, mum. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you doing before uh, Dairy Girls, before you got the, the big call? I was living with my ex-boyfriend in Manchester and I was lying to him and telling him that I had a sales job in town. So <laughs> basis, the basis of every relationship, a good lie. <laughs> a good lie. And what he was dropping me into town every day to this office block and then I would run around the corner and get into this car and drive outside of Manchester and sell, sell Hello Fresh door to door. Um, <laughs> How were you as a sales lady? I was absolutely awful because it was only commission based so you only got paid on your commissions and anybody that actually was interested in inviting you and their house to sign up for this was normally really old people that I just didn't believe knew how to work the internet well enough to ever get out of it <laughs> right get in the door, they would basically just feed me biscuits cup of tea I would have a chat with them and then they would try and sign up to it and I would tell them not to and then I would leave um so I basically just was scroll was strolling around the outskirts of Manchester for a year eating biscuits with old people before I got to the phone. That sounds like a like a lovely way to spend your time, but obviously not a lovely way to make yes. a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. I actually got sacked from that job then. That's understandable, yeah. Yeah, that's understandable. And I walked up, the, I was in Manchester at the time, I walked up to a Greg's and I was so scared to like, ring home and tell them I got fired from another job and I just didn't know what I was going to do. And the next thing, this email came through saying Dairy Gears from my agent at the time. And I opened it and genuinely thought they were making a documentary about dairy. And I was like, all right, okay, this isn't really the path that I want to go down, but I mean, you know, it's something. And then I read it and it was this obviously incredible sitcom and was so thrilled. And I just thought in that moment in time, I really, really have to, have to get this. And then I was on the phone. I rang my mom. I told her about it. And then, and walks these two men from Belfast and they heard me were talking to my mum on the phone they came up to me and they were like where are you from? I was like Jerry. they were like are you looking for a job? I was like funny you mentioned it I just got fired <laughs> and then they took me down to these mobile cabins and then I was working on a boat inside them for about six months doing what? they just walked me down put me straight into the like, office manager of this building site so I was up doing snagging and stuff on the building site everywhere I loved it it was great crack and then I went on to Dairy Cures. What, a, what an eclectic CV you have. <laughs> <laughs> Irish shows don't really travel that well. There's not a big history, like even Father Ted, our biggest export, it never really went to the States. So what was it like when the Yanks took hold of it and like just loved oh it God. so much? They loved it. And even being in New York, 
and all of them stop. And I'm, I'm definitely in New York as well. They generally thought I was about 15 or 16 and I could see some eyes in the bar being like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that child doing shots? <laughs> Why is that child doing shots? But they just love it. And I think, again, that's a testament to Lisa. And all the all the cast are just so brilliant. And it's a story about young girls who are finding themselves and who are unapologetically themselves at all times. And maybe there was a lack of that that we had on screen and the world wanted it and need it, needed it. And it's funny young woman, um, which we don't see very often. Yeah. So it's it's been amazing you know it really really has and i think selfish teenagers are universal so that's why it worked <laughs> can we be cheeky and get a tour of your gaff or do you want to keep that private side of your life private i mean it's a bit of a mess like if you really want to say it i think the public would love to see your filthy mess well why could you not have told me first and then it would have been tighter because oh, because no. i advised against it i was like no actor wants somebody looking around their gaff well it's just such a mess big telly and I'll show you out the back garden, but my room is an absolute shit tip. We've got a nice... What's that? What? Well, uh, Brian Freel. It's my extremely messy room. And I'll show you the garden, which has now turned out to be... Like, it actually has got such strong, happy commune vibes. <laughs> my flatmate, Laurie. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. How are you doing? You're on Irish night. digital television. Laurie's, Laurie's the sanding man. Oh, right. I've heard all about your sandings. Congratulations. Oh, <laughs> uh, so it turns out she doesn't have internet in her garden. And uh, Oh, wait. You're back. You're back. Yeah, I like how this is the way your mother dis discovers that you're living in utter filth. Uh, I'm Not utter filth. Thank you very much. It's spotless. <laughs> well, actually, I would love to just point out at this moment that our house is lovely happy commune sort of house and it's not normally a mess it's just because of lockdown and uh, uh, your house looks lovely uh this has been um highly manicured i'm very much aware of what's been seen so like all the shit we have a spare room and that just has become the shit room uh, well Yvonne mcsweeney who plays the sister michael, sister michael yeah her coat, which i'll show you now has been hanging up i'll hang it back up has been hanging up this wall. Here. Mind yourself. So that coat has been hanging there for all lockdown, and we're now calling it the ghost of Sister Michael because it's just hung in the living room. And before this started, I was like, I need to take Siobhan off the wall. That's the kind of stuff that you wake up in the middle of the night and have a mini heart attack about. I have fallen asleep on the sofa and nearly had an absolute stroke waking up and seeing that hanging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the one thing you rely on to keep your sanity? I think if I didn't have FaceTime, I'd really, really, really miss my family because living here, and I've been in England now nearly 10 years. Obviously, I've always been able to go home when, whenever I want, and it's quite a bizarre feeling to like, no, I can't just go back to Ireland. Yeah. I feel like that. So I'm really, really grateful for FaceTime, being able to see everybody's faces at home. And I'm really, really grateful for red sparkle and wine that I've just discovered because it feels like a treat at the end of every day. It's like slur, and I love it. <laughs> what do you think some of the positives that will be coming out of this whole thing? Well, I've definitely noticed right alone a sense of community. I think we'll be less wasteful. I've definitely noticed that here in our house. I mean, people are only going out to do, hopefully they're one shop or one or two shops a week and you're trying to make do out of that. And maybe we'll have better diets after this because we'll be cooking better and just a, a better sense of compassion. Have you started making sourdough yet? Our oven's too crap. And we were so close to getting a new oven before all this Palava started and now I'm raging that we didn't. Honestly, our oven is like a camping oven. It's like the little, uh, the little like gas ring. Yeah, I know, that's not worth it's the shit. It's horrific. It takes like two and a half hours, and this is not an exaggeration to make oven chips, so there's absolutely no hope in hell that we're going to be making sourdough bread. So what's the first thing you're going to do when this blows over and you can finally leave the gaff? I'll go for pasta. Straight after that, I'll go for a dance. I'll come home, wake up the next morning, go to Ireland, and that would be me, happy eye. That sounds nice. I like that. You said you've had, the closest thing you've had to a portrait is a caricature. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this now. It's not going to be that different now. Um, 
Oh God, I, I find oh, it very, I find it very hard to draw to paint women. I can, I can paint men easy enough because. But women are just so stifling. Uh, it's just so hard to capture our beauty. It, so it really beautiful. is. It is a hard thing to capture beauty. Yeah, but I, I, I swear to God, man, I'm doing my best. Well, come here. Uh, this is not. This is not ready. Okay. All right. No. Uh, so I'm gonna slowly reveal what I have so far. Oh man, you honestly, you look like you're. This painting looks like um, like an RTE prime time reporter, not a not a secondary school girl. <laughs> but uh, this is what I have so far. It's probably actually not bad from a distance. Can you see that? That actually looks good from a distance. Can you rank closer? Okay. <laughs> like, I think that's really good. Look, it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to work on it a bit more, but uh, it looks, it does look like you're running for office <laughs> in Monaghan. <laughs> <laughs> you're running for the Monaghan election. Uh, it's definitely a Sinn Féin poster as well. Like. <laughs> Definitely a Shannon poster. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're making big changes over in Sinn Féin. <laughs> um, Seriously, thank you so much for chatting to us. That was absolutely lovely. Thanks for painting and having me. Look it. It was my pleasure. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care, Sirs. Coffee, Slan. Slan. Here's Sirsha as Erin in Dairy Girls. Or as she would look like if she was running for election. So they had to serve chicken suppers. Uh, to, you know, <laughs> do you remember? Well, people were baskets of chicken and peas. They were langers. <laughs> <laughs>